this place, the CCK as we call it in the States, and it's amazing. And Marcus just told me it's the fifth, fifth biggest cultural center in the whole world. I don't know, it's just great to come here and play and, and everyone can get in and, you know, you, you play this huge show and it somehow feels like you connect with people, which isn't always the case in the, let's face it, a lot of the music I play can be considered marginal, you know, a lot of the time, like improvised music and out jazz and stuff like that, but I just usually feel a strong connection with the people around here. When, when we get to play here, it's a great thing. My composition process is, it's fairly methodical. Like I, I try to have everything spring from one little, it could be a melody or even an interval, you know, like space between two notes or, or a rhythm and, and then just have the whole piece spring from that. That's what I do normally. And then I usually write a lot more than I need and, and eliminate, like I revise a lot. Kind of like how I write words also. <laughs> it's, it's the same, I do the, it's kind of the same process for me.
I discovered it in um, the Bay Area where I lived for 10 years and I came across dance classes that needed, um, they needed drummers to play the music and there weren't a lot of people that knew the music around. But so I showed up and, and people, people that did know the music started teaching me um, the music and, and I, I really was attracted to it instantly. And um, for a number of reasons, I think it has things that are connected probably the origin of some things in jazz and like funk music and they even had some aggression in it which I like in a lot of music and then I, I just started I kind of went backwards through the people I was playing with and found their teachers and then eventually that led me to Daniel and Marcus and, and others that I still study with. One of his friends introduced me to him as taking lessons from me and since, since that we connect I first met Chess as a drum student um, of Danielle's, and uh, Danielle lives in California and I live in New York, so Chess was looking for somebody to study with in New York, and uh, Danielle recommended me, so that was how our relationship started. We are back in the day friends. We are the, all the friends that we, I connect him to Chess, and then now we have opportunities for, for all three of us to connect and do what we love to do, which is the music that we share together.
think, I mean, all of it I can picture that We All Break has in common with my other projects is that I put them together and wrote, wrote the music. But it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's the most, it's the thing I've done that's the most me coming at a, a, I guess a culture as an, as an outsider and trying to incorporate that into my writing. Working with Chess uh, and We All Break, which is his project that he's put together um, to explore different ways of um, taking the traditional Haitian drum music that he's been studying for a long time and putting it into a new context. Um, it's been a really rewarding project for me to be a part of. Danielle and I, who go way back in our history together, to have a chance to play with Chess and Matt, who also have a very deep musical connection and history. So when the four of us get together, they're uh, certainly, uh, it's greater than this, the individual parts because there's a lot of communication that you really can't plan for. It has to be those musical relationships that have happened over a long period of time and people that have a very almost uh, telepathic connection with each other musically. For him to have me in a tour, um, travel with him and with, represent my culture, it's amazing that I need um, to acknowledge his effort and all his talent to both the music put together the jazz and traditional. So it is amazing for me to be part of this. We all break and proud to be rep to represent my country. Thinking of what does this music mean, even to the, your group and to the culture and everything like that, you know, because you're always looking for a reason to keep going, I guess.
There was kind of a lot of different musics to check out, and you could do it all because the scene, the scenes were smaller than they are in New York. You know, you didn't have to just. New York is very focused on one direct thing you're pursuing artistically or whatever, and. San Francisco is able to do a lot of things, including get involved in the Haitian drumming. What I could say about the traditional drum music of Haiti, which really its proper name in the Haitian culture is vodou drumming or tambou, vodou, tambou means drum in Haitian Creole, which is the, really the main language from the culture of Haiti. Uh, I quickly discovered that Haiti was largely unknown by the world at large compared to some other diaspora traditions like Cuban drumming, or Brazilian drumming, or various drumming from West Africa, whether it's djembe or sabar drums from Senegal, or uh, Congolese drumming. Uh, Haitian uh, music is far less known uh, in the world communities, but Haitian music is very specific, it's very particular, it has its own unique uh, setup, its own unique um, language of the drums itself and uh, it incorporates a lot of the culture, so the more you explore that, the deeper it gets. For me, as a drummer, whenever I touch a drum and play it, I do believe the way that I raise by the Spirit, I am play to call, call them. I play for them to be around when I'm playing. That's how, for me, that I feel like it's very special.
Thank you.